All right, 40 Days of Prayer, week three continues we, today. When I was about 12 years old, I started to take an interest in learning to play the drums. So I borrowed a drum kit from my church one summer, and I set it up in my bedroom, and I started to practice some basic drum beats that my dad taught me. And my dad is not a drummer, but he knew some very basic things, and he showed those to me, and so I learned the, the basics. Uh, but I, I wanted more. I wanted to be good at drums. I didn't want to just be mediocre. I wanted to be really good. So uh, I, I, I wanted to be excellent. So I started uh, working at a summer job, and I, and I earned money, and I saved up money, and I paid my way to go to jazz camp at Acadia University. And I went to jazz camp, and I learned from professional drummers, and it was awesome, and my drumming got better. And then there was a, a day that propelled me further in my drumming than anything else prior to that. I got in the, f- in the mail a flyer from Music Stop. It used to be called Music Stop. Now it's called Long and McQuaid. I got a flyer in the mail from my local Music Stop, and it said, Drumming Masterclass with Dom Famulero. Oh, wow, what is this? And so I found out Dom Famulero was one of the world's greatest drummers, and he still is, actually. And uh, he was doing a master class, a a free clinic at the music store. Um, And so I grabbed my sticks, and I got my dad to drive me in to a music stop, and I spent an afternoon with a handful of other young, aspiring drummers with Dom Famulero. And he showed me things I have never seen before. Tips and tricks and techniques and approaches and theories. It just blew my mind. And I left with three or four of his books. I think that was the reason he was there. Um, But anyway, I left with three or four of his books. And I started practicing his techniques and learning his ways. And I got a lot better at drumming. I got better and better and better. Now this morning, we're going to have a master class in prayer. A master class in prayer. A master class is where you learn, not from a traditional teacher, but from an expert uh, in the field. And this morning, the expert we're going to learn from is the very best of them all, and that is Jesus himself. Jesus' disciples were prayers. Any good Jewish person knew how to pray. They learned to pray as children, and, it, and they prayed. It was part of their culture. It was part of their DNA. And so Jesus' disciples would have been been prayers, but then they saw Jesus praying, and they thought, wow, Jesus, when Jesus prays, it's like he has the ear of heaven. When, When Jesus prays, it's something more happening than we've ever encountered. It was like he was, it's like, like he literally communing with God every time he prayed. So the disciples saw that, and they thought, oh, man. We're like little Michael Fredericks in prayer, and we want to be like a Dom Famulero in prayer. We want to be like Jesus. We want to go from average prayers, from basic beginner stage prayers, to great prayers. So they asked him one day, they said, Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. We know we, we're praying, but we want to learn from the Master. And so they asked that question, and the best part, Jesus answered them. He gives them a master class in prayer. He doesn't just say, ah, just talk to God, whatever, it doesn't matter. No, he says, okay, here's how you pray. And that's what we're going to read this morning in Matthew chapter 6. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Matthew chapter 6. And starting at verse 5. It's actually in Luke's account of this, in Luke 11, where the disciples ask the question, and Jesus gives the answer. But Matthew's has a little bit more content to it. So we're going to read Matthew's version of it. Now, just before I read this, um, the very first Sunday in this series, the the topic was a beginner's guide to prayer. And I had four points. Let me remind you of those. The, The first one was, I can pray about anything because he loves us and he cares about all of areas of our lives and nothing is off limits in prayer. And then I said that I can pray anytime and anywhere, in the car, at work, doing the dishes, uh, what doesn't matter. You can have an ongoing conversation with God all day. That's great. Pray without ceasing. Uh, The third point, I should pray sincerely and simply. No need for fancy words. You can go back to that first slide. We're not quite there yet. Um, 
no need for fancy words or flowery, flowery language, right? Just simple prayers, honest from the heart. And the fourth point was I can expect God to answer my prayers. With every answer, whether that's a yes or a no or a wait or something else or whatever, God shows He's a good Father. He knows what's best. So that was the beginner's guide to prayer. And all of that is true, and all of that is good, and we need to get that. But that's the beginner's guide, okay? And maybe you're ready to move on from the beginning stages of your prayer life. Maybe you're ready to go deeper. And so today, instead of a beginner's guide, it's a master class. And Jesus takes us deeper. So, I can pray about anything. Yes, but what if there are things to pray about that would make my prayers even better? I can pray anytime, anywhere. Yes, but what if I also had a specific place and time for prayer? I should pray sincerely and simply. Yes, but what if I also began to learn Jesus' techniques? I can expect God to answer my prayers. Yes, but what if... Prayer is really about something more, something deeper than asking and receiving from God. So that's where we're going this morning as we see Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 5. Jesus says, And when you pray, I like that he assumes that you are praying. He doesn't say, and if you decide you're going to pray. No, he says, when you pray, because you will pray, that's what you should be doing. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. You know, about big, fancy, show-offy public prayers and how that's not that impressive to God. And some of the Jewish Pharisees, the really religious people of Jesus' day, they were known to do that sort of thing, to stand in the synagogue or to stand on the street and make a big show of their great prayer and everyone just go, wow, that person is so holy. And God is not impressed. That's what Jesus is saying. God is not impressed. This is what he says to do, okay? Verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. What is that reward? We're going to talk more about that in a minute. But Jesus' first instruction here, Jesus' first technique in his master class that he teaches us is this. Number one, when you pray, go to a quiet place by yourself. He says, go into your room and shut the door. Now that doesn't mean that public prayer is wrong or that group prayer is wrong. Um, But Jesus is just teaching us how to have a strong personal prayer life. That's what this is about. Jesus prayed publicly from time to time. But when Jesus prayed on his own, when he had his own prayer time daily, multiple times a day, it often says in the scriptures that he went off to a quiet place by himself. He went off to a quiet place by himself. Why would he do that? Well, because life for Jesus was often crazy and chaotic. The crowds were following him. It was, it was nuts sometimes. He needed separation from the noise and the busyness of the world around him to focus his heart and his mind on prayer. Now those of you who are married, maybe you can relate to the sort of situation where you're in a really busy stage of life, like I am right now with five little kids, and sometimes... You know, you're talking to your husband or your wife, but the conversations you're having are like very short, in-passing, matter-of-fact conversations. You know, I'm coming in, you're going out, and it's like, who's picking up who? We're texting, you know, text me the grocery list so I can pick that. Like, it's just very like run of the day, let's nuts and bolts, let's get this day, get through this day kind of conversation. Now, we're talking all day, but it's like, it's not meaningful, deep conversation anybody can relate to that right you have those days where it's just like yeah we're we're talking but it's it's just about you know who's picking up who from soccer and you know that kind of stuff can you go get milk and that kind of thing but if you want to go deeper with your spouse what do you do you gotta set some time aside you gotta go on a date or, or you gotta go for a drive or go for a walk or when the kids are in bed just sitting with the tv off sometimes that off button can make a big difference you know Turn that TV off. Just talk. It's 
spend some time just talking to each other. And if you really want to pray, pray. If you really want to go deeper with God, it's the same thing. The where and the when matters. You've got to carve out time. You've got to find a way to find the time. And designate a place. Designate a place. We talked about this at one of our care groups, uh, about having a designated prayer spot and how that might be really, really helpful to you. Uh, someone said that they, they go and they sit in a chair they don't normally sit in for anything else, and just that's where I go to pray. That's really smart, the prayer chair. And I do the same thing in my office, actually. I have my desk, and then I've got two chairs where visitors come and sit. And when I want to pray and read my Bible, I actually get up from my desk, and I go four feet, and I sit in the chair. And I do that because I know if I'm sitting at my desk, I'm in work mode. But when I go and I sit in the prayer chair, I'm in prayer mode. And it's just that simple little four feet of a difference makes, makes a, a, big, a big change for my mindset. And so that's what Jesus says. He says, go. Go into a room and shut the door. Have a spot. Have a time. Maybe it's a room in your house. Maybe it's a, a literal closet. Some people have a prayer closet, which is a literal closet. That's just for prayer. Whatever. Some place that you can be alone and have quiet. Just like Jesus. He went off to a quiet place by himself. Smart. So now Jesus continues in Matthew 6, verse 7. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So here's Jesus' second point. When you pray, less is more. Less is more. I'm about to. Yep. In his first illustration, Jesus says, don't be like the religious hypocrites, right? These Pharisees that stand up and want attention for themselves. In his second illustration, he says, don't be like the Gentiles, or in this case, he's thinking like pagans, those who worship false gods. And those who did that, those pagans, those Gentiles, had this tendency to pray repetitious prayers for hours. Let me give you a couple examples, biblical examples. Paul is on a missions trip to Ephesus. And in Ephesus, he's preaching about Jesus, and they don't like that. He's disturbing the status quo by talking about this Jesus of Nazareth. They don't like that the Jewish people are there trying to tell us to tell us how to worship our gods and telling us that our gods are false. And so crowds begin to form and they start to get angry and they go nuts and they work themselves into a frenzy. And it says in Acts 19 verse 34, it says, For about two hours they cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! Go to the next slide, please. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! Over and over and over again for two hours. That's the kind of stuff that these pagans were doing. Another example, perhaps what Jesus had in mind when he taught the disciples, was from the showdown on Mount Carmel. Remember that story? I love that. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. The prophet Elijah, the prophet of the one true God, and the prophets of Baal. They have this showdown on Mount Carmel. And they, they each have an altar, and, they, and they, they, put, uh, they cut up a bowl, and they put the meat on the altar. And the, the test is which God is going to be able to send fire down from heaven and, and burn up the sacrifice. And so the prophets of Baal, they go first. And in 1 Kings uh, verse, uh, chapter 18, verse 26, it says that they, from morning until noon, so that would be like four hours, they nonstop prayed, O oh, Baal, answer us! O oh, Baal, answer us! O oh, Baal, answer us! For four hours. And then at lunchtime, they took a break and they cut themselves and they bled all over the place and they thought that would get Baal's attention. And then they continued all afternoon. Oh, Baal, answer us. It says they raved on. I like that. They raved on. For all their raving, there was no fire. And then it's Elijah's turn. So they give up. Oh, I don't know. Elijah says, here, let me show you how it's done, boys. <laughs> he builds a little altar. He puts the, the meat on it. And he soaks it in water three times just to, just to sweeten the deal a little bit just to show how awesome our God is. And then it says in verses 36 to 37, At the time of the offering of the oblation, so in the evening offering, Elijah the prophet came near and said, 
O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, this, this is his prayer. O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me, that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back. That's the whole prayer. Ten seconds. They had just prayed all day, nonstop, O Baal, answer us, O Baal, answer us, all day, with no results. Verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, Yahweh, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Maybe they said that for four hours. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. I love that story. That's awesome. Our God is an awesome God. Amen? Amen. Jesus says, look, when you pray, don't be like those pagans. They go on and on and on, repeating the same empty phrases over and over again. For what? It's pointless. Less is more. A contemporary English version translation of this says, When you pray, don't talk on and on as people do who don't know God. They think God likes to hear long prayers. God doesn't, it doesn't have to be long. As we said the first week, just simple and sincere. Simple and sincere, that's it. Less is more. The key bit of explanation here from Jesus is this phrase. Next slide, please. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is interesting. So, this raises a question, doesn't it? Okay, wait a second. If God knows what I need before I ask Him, why do I even pray? What's the point? Why should I bother even asking God for anything? That is a very, very good question. And when you start to ask that question, I believe you are on the verge of a breakthrough in prayer. You are on the verge of going to the next level in your prayer life. Because you are starting to realize this third point. That uh, Well, actually, let me say it another way. When you start to realize that, you are starting to realize that the purpose of prayer is more than just asking God for things. In fact, that's not really the point at all. God already knows. There's something greater to that. So the third point, here's Jesus' technique and tip in his master class. When you pray, don't spend the whole time asking for things. Maybe there's something else God is looking for when we pray besides a list of prayer requests. Now, don't get me wrong. He wants you to ask. We've talked about that multiple times in our sermons, in our care groups. He wants you to ask because He's a good Father. And He loves you and He cares about every area of your life. He really, really, really does want you to ask for anything. But Jesus says... Don't go on and on in your prayers with the requests because the Father already knows what you're going to ask anyway. And so you see what this means, and this is huge. This is the paradigm shift in our prayer life. What this means is that the purpose of prayer, the reason that we go into the room and shut our door, maybe the actual purpose of all that isn't getting God to answer our requests. Maybe what Jesus is saying here is that the purpose of prayer is something deeper than that. The primary purpose of prayer, next slide, is spending time with God. Yeah, it's about the relationship. What Jesus is getting at here is that the reason we should get alone to a quiet place, the reason that we should use fewer words, and the reason we shouldn't spend the whole time asking for things is because the reason we are praying is really about investing in our relationship with God. It's about fostering intimacy and connection with our Heavenly Father. It's like a marriage, absolutely. Remember what Jesus said? Uh, He said that the Father will reward you when you go into your room and shut your door and pray, right? He said, the Father who sees you in secret, He will reward you. It seems to me that that reward isn't 
all these answered prayers, all these yeses to our prayers. The reward is fellowship with God. The reward is friendship with the creator of the universe. That's the reward. Now, for some of you, I know this is a huge shift in thinking. It's been, even as I've worked through this sermon, it's really sunk into my heart, too. Like, wow, yeah, I'm starting to get this, too. This is cool, right? Um, The main purpose of prayer is not to ask and receive from God. The main purpose is relationship. Oswald Chambers, who wrote My Utmost for His Highest, this is a classic little devotional book that people have used for decades and decades. This is what he says. We look upon prayer simply as a means of getting things for ourselves. But the biblical purpose of prayer is that we we may get to know God himself. Oswald Chambers, this old fellow. I don't know, he's probably dead now, I'm sure. Yeah. An old pastor and writer. God is saying, my love language is quality time. Right? You have the love languages. God's love, one of God's love language is this quality time. Come and spend time with me. He says, talk to me, get to know me better. Listen and learn from me. Like the husband and wife, right? Who set aside that time away from the chaos and craziness of life just to talk to each other, just to be with each other, just to get to know each other better. Prayer is about being with your Heavenly Father. So Jesus says, here's how to pray. Get alone, get into a specific place, shut the door, and don't fill the air with lots and lots of words, with lots and lots of requests. God already knows everything that you're going to ask Him. That's not what this is about. That's not what this prayer time is really for. It's really for building in your relationship with God. Wow. Okay, so that sounds awesome. But also, it's a little weird, isn't it, right? Because like, okay, well, I get that, that's cool, but what am I supposed to say then (laughs) as I go into my prayer closet, as I sit in my prayer chair? What words am I supposed to use? What am I supposed to be doing in my quiet prayer place? Well, Jesus continues in his master class in verses 9 to 13 with the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, and he gives us an outline, a pattern for prayer. And so, care groups, the next two weeks are going to dig into this, the Lord's Prayer. Two weeks on the Lord's Prayer in care groups. And next Sunday, I'm going to continue as well and go over these verses in the next week's message. So, if you want to find out, you got to come back. Amen? All right, stay tuned. Let's close in prayer and then we'll have a song as we finish. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. You are awesome, God. You are great and good. Lord, teach us how to pray. We want to become more like Jesus in every way, including in our prayer lives. So help us, Lord. We want to know you more. Fill our hearts and our minds with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.